Hi, I'm feeling a little bored today, so I thought I'd make a little video tutorial on how I keep my knives sharp. I have four cheap knives, three from Ikea, one Chicago cutlery. These are like eight to nine inch chef's knives, a little fillet knife, and a uh, paring knife. Nothing fancy, but they work quite well, and it's largely because I keep them pretty sharp most of the time. And this Ikea knife right now is pretty sharp. I just touched it up, and it'll do a good job of cutting. This Chicago cutlery, for the purposes of this de demonstration, I have roughed up the edges by rolling it on a cutting stone. Uh, and that one, you can see, is a little, little bit of a sharp bit up near the edge there, or the tip, but the rest of it is pretty dull. Not like the Ikea. So, let's get busy and I'll show you how to do this. So I have a number of different uh, diamond whetstones. I don't know exactly what grit this is, but I think it was a uh, fine or extra fine. Uh, it's not particularly rough. Um, this smaller one that I carry with me sometimes when I'm visiting friends uh, has one side that it was that is rougher than this, and the other side that's about the same. And this I pretty much only use if the knife has been sharpened quite a bit and has developed a sort of uh, thick shoulder, and I want to take some of that shoulder material off to get more of a thin edge at the, the edge of the knife. So I might lay it down so I'm not actually cutting, you know, uh, sharpening at the, um, the very edge but I'm instead just sitting on the shoulder of the knife there, and I can rub on that to uh, try to thin, the, thin it up near the edge. Um, but most of the time, I will use the finer stone, and what you wanna do is start by putting a little water on that, which helps float the grid around so it doesn't jam up the stone. And you want to have something like 20 degree angle when you're cutting at the, ed at the very edge of it. And you can estimate that by starting at 90 degrees, going to 45, splitting that to, what, 22 and a half, and then down a little bit. Someone I saw said, you know, stack two quarters there, but that's going to vary with the thickness of your blade and where on the blade the quarters are hitting. So you just kind of have to get a feel for it. You can also watch the edge uh, there and try to see whether it's actually touching all the way to the edge of the knife or if there's a bit of a gap visible under the edge. Mostly I do it by feel. Um, so you get it at about the right angle, and I will often start with a circular motion, very rapid and, and firm, to try to wear down the surf, the, um, the metal fairly quickly. And how, mo how much you want to do this is going to depend on how dull the knife is. Um, one way to see how dull it is is to hold it so that you're looking, I'm looking at the camera here, so that you're looking right at the edge uh, and you don't really see the blade at all, you just see the edge. And when you're doing that, um, have the light coming from sort of the side of your, your head here, over your shoulder sort of, or from the side, and maybe hold it against a dark background and just roll the knife back and forth when you're looking straight at the edge and look for any bright points along the, the uh, edge there, because a bright point is going to be a place where instead of meeting at a sharp angle, there's a flat spot there, and that flat spot is reflecting light right back at you. 
Um, you can't really see it in the camera, but when I look at this and I roll it back and forth, I am just seeing bright line all the way down the edge there because I've pretty much dulled the whole thing. So what you want to do is keep sharpening until you pretty much don't see any bright spots at all along the edge. It just looks dark all the way. Let's see if I can get to that point with this knife. So, start. Oh, as you're doing this, you want to work the whole edge all the way down to the tip and uh, definitely paying attention to the, the uh, the heel, or the, the heel of the knife down here and the curve here. If you spend most of your time in the middle of the knife here, over time your knife will develop kind of a dip at that point. So it'll curve up here, then down a bit, then up at the, at the end there. And that's pretty much a ruined knife because when you're cutting vegetables, if you chop, 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 this middle part of the knife is never going to contact the cutting board, and so you won't be cutting through the vegetable at that point. So you always want to keep it either straight or slightly uh, convex. You never want to get a concave shape on the knife here. And sometimes that means you just have to spend some extra time at the, the curve or down at the heel here to keep from developing that. And then flip it over and do some of that on the other side. start some finishing strokes on this. I'm also going to lay it down a bit and work on the shoulder just to keep it from over time getting too blunt. So I'm not actually cutting on the edge right now. I'm up on riding up on the shoulder rubbing that down. the blade and when I, when you're doing the circular motion that's fine for taking off metal quickly but you don't want to finish with a circular motion like that because every time you're dragging backwards like this it the grit on the stone is pulling little bits of metal off and some of those little bits of metal are left hanging on the edge it's like a little wire that's been carved out of the, the uh, metal, and then it's just sort of sitting there attached to the edge. So the edge actually has this sort of fuzzy quality to it on a microscopic level, and that's not gonna be good for cutting. So what you wanna do to finish it is to get just at that right angle where it's just, you can kind of feel where it's just cutting and do some straight pushing strokes, holding that. And again, all the way down the edge to the tip. And then flip it over. And do the same thing. So you're always pushing the edge forward so that all the, the wire bits are being pulled off backwards uh, towards the back of the blade 
and just in a straight line. So all the little grooves are going straight up the knife. I see a little glint here and there. And the rest looks pretty good. So a little bit right around there and a little bit right around there. Do a little more circular motion in those spots and feathering it out to the side so I'm not spending too much time in the middle there. I still see some tiny little glints in those spots and I'm not going to worry about it because for my purposes this is quite sharp enough. Um, I think that'll do. So, Get yourself a decent sort of uh, diamond whetstone. Like I said, probably extra fine will do for kitchen knives. Um, the, if you can afford it, you might want to get uh, a rougher, fine one for taking off more material if you need to. If you're starting out with really dull knives that have been just, you know, dulled up by mashing on metal and ceramic or something, uh, you may have to take off quite a bit of material before you can actually put a nice finished edge on it. And of course, at a certain point, you get to where the knife just doesn't have enough metal left, and you know, if it starts just turning into a little point, or you lose all of the, the uh, rocker on a nice chef's knife, then it's probably time to get a new knife. But in the meantime, you can have years and years of great cutting from a perfectly fine, perfectly cheap knife. You don't have to spend a ton of money on it.